Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here. Um, just thought I'd do a quick little how-to video for you, and I might start doing a series of these as I uh, start to do different parts of different models. Today we're going to look at doing some dry brushing with oil paints. Um, you may have done dry brushing with acrylics, it's kind of very similar. If you've never done dry brushing before, then this is how we're going to do it. Now this is my method of doing um, this particular thing. This is a Fire Moulds 170 second Millennium Falcon. What I'm trying to do is reproduce the streaking on the engine at the back. The, uh, the vents on the back give off whatever and it's kind of black streaks. A lot of people paint them with an airbrush which is absolutely fine. I personally don't do that because I don't find it's uh, controllable enough. Uh, a lot of people put really dark black stripes and if you look at the actual filming models it's quite subtle, it's not a really obvious black stripe, it's not as blatant as you think. So I prefer to do it with dry brushing and um, I prefer to do dry brushing where I can with oil paints purely because I think they're a bit more controllable than acrylics. If you dry brush with acrylics you'll know um, as you're dry brushing the paint can often and this, this doesn't depend on a particular brand, it happens in any brand. The paint can often clump up in the brush and you get little spots and lumps and I can't be doing with that. Um, so what I tend to do is if I have to do some dry brushing I'll use oil paints. Uh, what I'm going to use today uh, are the uh, MIG Productions 502 Abteilung oils. Uh, and to do the streaks on the back I'm going to be using Starship Filth and Engine Grease. Now you can see here I've already done some initial dry brushing with engine grease. This was done yesterday, it's been allowed 24 hours to dry and it's been matte varnished. Um, with oil paints they take a long time to dry. Dry brushing coats don't take as long as say painting paint directly on, you wouldn't tend to do that very often. Um, but a dry brush coat, if you're going to do dry brushing and you're going to do several stages like one colour then another colour then another, leave at least 24 hours between each application, 48 if you can. Um, to be extra safe I tend to leave it for a day and then varnish over it with a matte varnish um, just to be safe. The thing with oils, because they take so long to, to dry fully, uh, it's very easy to um, do one colour dry brush, leave it for a while and then do another colour. If the under, if the first colour is still wet, all you're doing is mixing the two colours together. Now what I don't want that, what I'm doing here is, the way my mind works is these are heat vents, putting out whatever, exhaust and the heat as well. Um, so it's not just going to be sooty black, um, the film model has more grey kind of tones, so Starship Filth is perfect for that, it's not black, it's more of a very dark grey. Uh, and I also want to suggest the heat, so what I've done to, do, to, to give that idea is do some engine grease first, which is kind of this brown burnt tone, and then I'll work in some Starship Filth to darken it up in the middle and leave these bits faded around the edges. So it just looks like when you've heated something you get the dark patch in the middle and the more browny tones, the lighter tones around the edge. So it's dead simple. Uh, what I will do is what I've forgotten to do is get some thinner. Now as I say I'm using MIG Abteilung, MIG's Abteilung 502 or rather 502 Abteilung oils. You can use normal artist oils or any other kind of modelling oil paints. Um, I just like MIG's because they've got the two colours I love which is Starship Filth and Engine Oil, uh, Engine Grease sorry. There's my head, sorry about that. Um, very, very simple. If you're doing dry brushing before, you'll know what we're doing. All I need is some thinner, which is odorless uh, turpenoid, odorless artist's oil thinner. Odorless important because it doesn't stink. You can use other things like mineral spirits, white spirits, but they're kind of stinky, so I wouldn't bother. A uh, bit of kitchen roll or tissue of some sort. I have a little plastic thing for my palette and a blob of Starship Filth. And for dry brushing, you can use different brushes, but because I want a subtle streak on here, I'm going to use a big flat brush. Um, now for oils, if you can afford it, get sable brushes. They're much better quality, they'll last much longer, and they don't tend to just go horrible after being used for a while. They tend to hold their shape. And go for soft. With dry brushing, always go for soft brushes. Um, the majority of the times I dry brush, I use a chisel edge brush like this. It's flat and it's square. Because a lot of dry brushing you're actually going over edges like this. You're not tending to do things like this, but this works just as well. So let's get on with it. Very, very simple. Get your oil paint, no thinner. Get your brush in the oil paint. Give it some nice coverage. 
then on your tissue, I hope you can see this, I've moved the camera around a bit, on the tissue, just brush most of the paint off till you've got almost nothing. I'm hoping you can see all of this. Oh, also wear gloves, uh, purely because two reasons. One, it gets everywhere and it'll get on your hands and you'll transfer it to other parts of the model um, and it gets on your hands and it's a pain. And also it, because it takes so long to dry, um, you'll end up putting fingerprints in parts you've just painted. So always wear gloves. Get a bit off. So as you can see now, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got most of the paint off the brush now. There's almost not that much coming off on the tissue. That's what I want. Very simple. I've got the brown streaks here. All I'm going to do is, with no pressure, almost not touching the plastic, um, I'm just going to do my streaks and keep them in the straight line. Now at first, you'll be thinking, I can't see anything, there's no difference. I can't see anything at all. But it will gradually, gradually build up. Um, I've done this on the Falcon for anybody who's wondering how to paint the engines on the Falcon, but this would this technique would apply to any model that you want to do something similar. Now I need to get it round the back here. I'm, I'm positing that stuff from here comes out and hits the back of this. So I'm going to make sure this is nice and dark. And again, I'm not using very much pressure at all. Also, I'm being gentle because a lot of the pieces on the back of this Falcon are really, really delicate and I've snapped a couple of them already and had to repair the damage. Now on the studio model, these ones go down to about here, these ones go down a bit further and the middle ones go down the furthest. So I'm just doing, trying to reproduce that. What you tend to do as well, when you're brushing it, I can't really show you because the camera's there, but brush it and tilt it that way so that as the brush goes along, it leaves the surface gradually and what you tend to do then is feather it. So it, a lot of paint comes off here and then less and less and less and then you've left, you've left the surface. So that's a good way of fading it out. Do small, if you want it to be this long, don't move the brush across here all the way. Do little movements and just do less and smaller movements. And that way you'll build it up quite nicely rather than just having long black streaks. I want most of the darkness to be around here. I'm dabbing it a little bit just to build up this bit. But these streaks here, I'm just being quite subtle. I'm gonna get some inside these recesses because the little black covers and grills are going to go on here, but I want to suggest that the dirt's gone into them, or come out of them even. And that, my friends, is all it takes. That engine is now streaked. Uh, I will do these two. I'll speed this bit up so you don't have to watch it all, but I'll do these two now. But it's exactly the same technique. No thinners required. You're using just straight, neat oil paints. Again, if you can get things like the, the 502 Abtailung paints, they're really, really smooth. The, the pigment in them is very, very fine. So you don't tend to get bits coming out in the paint. It gives a nice, smooth finish. Artist oils are just, you know, are really, really good, but they tend to be a little less good, less high quality, a bit more grainy and granular. Um, so you do tend to get some bits. Okay, that's most of the paint off on the tissue. And we'll do the same again. I'm going to start. I've got to be careful where to put my hands. As you can see, the paint comes off. I've got to be really careful where I put my hands on this. I don't want to put paint on there. So let's just get a cloth. Get some of that off. Head. Sorry. So we'll do the same again. I'm just using almost no pressure at all because I, I can't control how much paint is on the brush right now. So... I'll start very gentle, just in case I've got too much paint on there. And then as the paint on the brush decreases, I'll up the pressure a little bit, just so I'm transferring more paint to the model. Okay, and we'll just get these down the middle. On the filming miniature, this, this bit here tends to bulge outwards, this staining. So I'm gonna keep it straight here and let the brown engine grease underneath do the bulging. I'm going to let this one come down a bit, down a bit further. Just check how that's looking. 
from there. That's cool. Now I want the backs of the front ones to be, or the backs of these ones to be dark because they're supposed to get all the crud off the ones in front. Whereas of course the ones in front don't have anything behind them, so you wouldn't see as much schmutz. And I can keep doing this till I'm happy that I've got enough transferred onto the onto the model. Keeping an eye on it from a distance as well, so I can make sure these are straight and not wonky. And again, if you if you look at the studio models, and if you're making a, a model based on a, a film or TV model, if you can, you don't have to. I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't quite as anal about it. There's a lot of people that are very anal about it. Um, if you are making something that exists, like as a filming miniature, it doesn't do any harm to go along to the internet and find some reference pictures. Just so you can not make a complete inaccurate model. You don't, you don't want to be really able to make it totally accurate, of course. Well, you might do. Some modelers do. But it's not absolutely vital. You know, if I'm making a model... I'll try and match the filming model as close as I can, even down to paint chips and weathering. Uh, it's not always possible to get it spot on. And if it's a commission and somebody's paying me to do it, then obviously, like in this case, this is a commission, I'll spend a lot more time than I would if I was just making it for myself. Trying to make sure things match. Now, if you've not made the, the Fine Moulds Millennium Falcon, a little bit about the kit. Um, there's two real major, or there have been, two real major sources to get a Millennium Falcon kit until recently. One was the old MPC um, Millennium Falcon kit. Which is woefully inaccurate because it was based on studio art and concept art made in the 80s. You can still get them, they probably go for a fortune on the Ebays. But they require a lot of accurization to make them look spot on. Uh, Firemolds started producing these in the early 2000s, they got a license from Lucasfilm. Uh, they actually had access to the filming miniature and did a lot of research into how to get it looking spot on and they did a fabulous job. This is the most accurate Millennium Falcon kit you can buy today. There's no argument about that. Um, however, some caveats to that. They've now lost the license to Bandai, so this kit is no longer in production. Uh, if you can find one on eBay or Amazon, they're still around you will pay upwards of two or three hundred quid. That's four or five hundred dollars or more. And the rarer these get, the more you will pay. So as time goes by, these will fade out. Bandai have got the license now. They haven't announced or shown any images or, or released a Falcon. So nobody knows what it's going to look like if they do one. I'm sure they will. Um, at the very least, hopefully it'll be as accurate as this. Um, other options. Uh, there's the old toy Kenner Falcons. They're not accurate. They're fun to mod to, to repaint, but they're not accurate at all. Um, there is a Hasbro two foot long Millennium Falcon toy, which has just been released recently. Um, some stores are selling them now in the States for as low as 10 quid or $10 because they're on sale. They're massive. They're top and bottom quite accurate, but they don't have a cockpit inside. It's just solid. And the side walls are just stickers. Um, but there are people manufacturing kits of resin parts to give the sidewalls. And apparently the old MPC Falcon sidewalls are a perfect fit. But there are people coming out with aftermarket parts to accurate, make it more accurate. Um, so if you can get a fine moulds kit, if you're willing to spend the money, do it sooner rather than later because these won't exist in maybe a year's time. You'll be paying God knows what. When there's only a few of them left in the wild, these could go up to seven, eight hundred dollars, seven hundred pounds about a thousand dollars whatever the exchange rate is so if you want one snap one up now or wait to see what the bandai one like is like they do a lot of snap kits so it might be a snap together kit nobody knows hopefully fingers crossed um and but though that is that that's the engine streaks done i'm just going to stand up so i can see them from above yeah looking pretty good so that my friends is how to do streaks on the falcon engine simple as that that's dry brushing technique that you can use for pretty much anything i'm going to do the same technique now on things like these um maintenance pits 
around the ship uh, and also some shading around the gunwale uh, recesses just to give some shade. I'm going to use starship fill for some of the darker shadowy areas but I'm going to go quite subtle so I'm going to use a smaller brush. Um, starship filth is a brilliant colour. If you, if you slap it on in large amounts, a bit like this, it goes to a dark grey-black. If you use it very lightly, it can be a nice sort of darker grey, shading, shadowy tone. Uh, I also used it for all the streaking, I don't know if you can see it on here, which was done as um, a little dot of paint over some, put thinner on the surface, dot of paint, and then just brush it with a dry brush to get the streaks. But that is that. That is how you do dry brushing with oil paints. Leave that for 24 hours, preferably 48. To be super safe, you don't have to, but if, to be super safe, before you put anything else over that, matte varnish it, or gloss varnish, whichever you prefer. I prefer matte. Um, if you get any bits where it's just a little bit lumpy or grainy, very simple, because it stays wet forever, just get a cotton bud or a Q-tip to our colonial cousins, and just smooth it. If it goes wrong, because it's still wet, you can get your cotton bud or your brush with some thinner, cover it in thinner, and you can wipe it all off. Uh, this kind of service might be difficult because it'll get into all the little cracks and grooves. Um, that's it. That's dry brushing. There you go. I'll probably come back and do some more of these how-tos, as I said, as I do more things on different models. Um, so stay tuned for more. Only little videos. Uh, if there's anything you want me to show, leave a comment on the YouTube page for this video or on my Facebook page. Uh, it's modelmaking.guru is the website facebook.com forward slash model making guru uh, and twitter is just at model making guru and on youtube i think i'm just model make youtube.com forward slash model making guru you get the trend there you'll find me somewhere um, but yeah leave a comment if there's something you want me to to show you how to do um, then next time i'm doing it i'll do a little video uh, but until that thanks very much for watching uh, go and enjoy the cold and freezing weather outside until it gets nice and warm in the summer in about a million years and we'll see you next time but until then Adios amigos.